My number one recommendation for someone who is itchy is just don't scratch. I'm just kidding. Whatever inflammatory skin condition you're suffering from, whether it be eczema, psoriasis, topical steroid withdrawal, or some other form of dermatitis, I know how annoying the itch can be. So let's get on with the video. Hello everyone, my name is Larry. Welcome to Fighting Eczema. If you really want to heal your skin, you need to break something called the itch scratch cycle. This is the cycle where you start off with itchy skin, you end up scratching that skin leading to damaged skin, you allow that damaged skin to heal, but before it's fully healed, it becomes itchy again. And basically you just go through this cycle over and over and over and your skin never really fully heals. So hopefully you'll be able to utilize some of the tips in this video to help you break the itch scratch cycle. Tip number one is to determine your personal food sensitivities. This is going to be different for everybody and it's very important that you determine your own personal food sensitivities and triggers because you might be eating these foods every single day not knowing that they're triggers and that might be contributing to your itchiness. To help you out, I've created a free diet and symptom tracker which you can download and use yourself. You can find this under the resources section at fightingeczema.com. Basically what you do is you record the foods that you eat in a day and then at the end of the day, you rate your itchiness levels. If you do this long enough, you might start to notice a link between certain foods that you're eating and your itchiness levels. Like I mentioned before, food triggers are gonna be different for everyone. However, some common food triggers might include eggs, wheat, nuts, shellfish, and processed foods. So really any food can be a trigger. It's up to you to figure that out. Another thing that you wanna watch out for is something called histamine intolerance. Histamine is a naturally occurring substance that your body produces during an immune system reaction. And it's something that can also lead to itching. Certain foods are high in histamines. And so if you are someone who is potentially sensitive to histamines, eating these foods might be contributing to your itchiness. So that's something to look into. You can Google foods high in histamine if you wanna learn more, but some examples include things like fermented foods, processed meats, dried fruits, and even certain vegetables like spinach. Tip number two is to keep your living environment on the cooler or colder side. The reasoning behind this is that on a molecular level, when your skin is itchy, you have specific neurons that are being stimulated. That's what's leading to that feeling of itchiness. A decrease in temperature leads to the inhibition or basically the calming down of these neurons, therefore reducing that feeling of itchiness. So what I would recommend is to create a cooler environment either by opening a window and using air conditioner or maybe taking off some excess clothing. Tip number three is to exercise appropriately. If you've seen any of our previous videos, you've probably heard me reminding you to get 30 minutes of physical activity every single day. This is because moving your lymphatic system is essential if you wanna heal your skin. Now, the problem that a lot of people face is that when they exercise, they work up a sweat and that sweat irritates their skin. If this sounds like you, don't just not exercise. Instead, choose exercises that won't make you sweat. You might want to consider lower impact exercises such as walking, yoga, stretching, something along those lines. Tip number four is be careful of what you put on your skin. Those of us dealing with inflammatory skin conditions basically have damaged skin. And because of that, our skin will be sensitive to basically everything. Depending on the stage of your skin condition, any product can be irritating to your sensitive skin. For example, you may have been able to use your favorite moisturizer in the past, but you're finding out nowadays that moisturizer is irritating your skin. That might just be because your skin is in a very damaged state. And it's very possible that once you heal your skin, you'll be able to go back to that favorite moisturizer. So the idea here is just be careful about what products you're putting on your skin. A lot of times I will tell people who have inflammatory skin conditions not to use anything at all, including things like lotions, shampoos, soaps, because these products can just be very irritating and might just trigger a flare up. 
If you are suffering from topical steroid withdrawal and you haven't watched our video on no moisture treatment, I recommend you check that out after this video. Tip number five is to clean your living spaces regularly. You probably know the feeling of leaving flakes of dead skin everywhere, right? The problem with all of this dead skin is that it eventually turns into dust. How many of you also suffer from allergies? There is actually a proven link between skin conditions and allergies. So if you're not cleaning regularly, all of that dead skin and dirt and grime and whatever else is just gonna build up and act as another allergen or irritant and potentially lead to more itching. One little tip I can give you is to make cleaning time physical activity time. Remember how I recommended 30 minutes of physical activity every single day? You can do things like vacuuming, wiping down your tables, changing your pillowcases and bed sheets. That all counts as physical activity. Before we move on to tip number six, I'm gonna ask you to hit the like button if you're finding this video useful, just so we can get this video to spread to others who might be suffering from the dreaded itch. As you can probably agree with me, this itch is one of the worst feelings ever. Thank you very much. Tip number six is to reduce stress. I always tell people, if work is giving you stress, quit your job. If school is giving you stress, drop out of school. I'm just kidding, don't do that. But anyways, research has shown that stress affects your nervous system in a way that contributes to feelings of itchiness. So if you are someone who suffers from a lot of stress or anxiety, this is a key area that you should focus on. And yes, I get it. Your skin condition is probably a major cause of your stress. However, I can guarantee you that there are other factors contributing to your stress that you can probably change. For example, maybe toxic friends and family. Tip number seven is to utilize medications and supplements. So I know a lot of you will hear the word medication and get scared, but I'm gonna tell you right now, that is not the right mindset to have. Yes, a lot of medications will only treat symptoms and not the root cause. However, you can treat both the symptoms and the root causes at the same time. Remember, our goal is to break that itch scratch cycle because once you stop scratching your skin, your skin will be able to fully heal. Utilizing certain medications, such as antihistamines, can be really beneficial if you're stuck in this itch scratch cycle. When it comes to supplements, there are so many different supplements out there that can be beneficial. For example, if you know that you are sensitive to histamines, you can take a supplement such as quercetin, which basically blocks histamine. Or if you are someone who suffers from itchiness due to anxiety or stress, you might wanna consider herbal supplements such as lavender or valerian to calm you down. Because choosing the right medications and supplements can be quite complex, I really recommend that you work with a healthcare professional who is knowledgeable in skin conditions. If you want to work with me personally, you can check out our programs at fightingeczema.com. I'd be happy to create a medication and supplement plan for you, as well as work on other areas of your skin health. Tip number eight is to consider a humidifier, unless where you live is already very humid. If the air inside your house is really dry, your skin is going to be extra dry. Dry skin can then lead to itchiness. So if you feel like the air where you live is very dry, consider investing in a humidifier. I think you can get one nowadays for like 30 to $40. Tip number nine is to keep yourself busy. When you're busy, your mind is not gonna be focusing on the itch. Instead, it's gonna be focusing on whatever it is you're keeping yourself busy doing. Now, when I say keep busy, I'm not saying overwork yourself, okay? What I'm saying is have stuff to do during the day so that you're not bored just sitting at home uh, doing nothing because that is when your brain is gonna start to fill that boredom with scratching. If you're someone who finds yourself getting itchy while doing relaxing activities like watching TV, I really recommend that you find something to do while you're watching TV, right? You don't have to quit watching TV, but instead find something like journaling, knitting, crocheting, drawing, or even getting one of those fidget toys. That way your hands are kind of busy while you're relaxing and they won't kind of go to your skin and start scratching. Okay, so let's say you were able to keep yourself busy during the day and you didn't scratch. Awesome. However, it's now bedtime. 
You get ready, you jump into bed, you're lying there, ready to go to sleep. But then, the itch attacks you in full force. I've had this experience so many times where I get into bed, I'm ready to go to sleep, but then I get super itchy for no reason at all. Or I will fall asleep and end up scratching in my sleep. So I'll wake up bleeding and I didn't even know I scratched myself. How are we supposed to stop ourselves from scratching when we're doing it while we're sleeping? Can any of you relate? Well, if this sounds like you, hear me out because our number 10 tip is to optimize your sleep. You need to be getting quality sleep if you want your skin to heal. So if you're getting into bed and you're itchy and you end up scratching, you're doing the opposite of what we want. You're damaging your skin rather than repairing it. When you jump into your bed, you should be falling asleep relatively quickly. If instead you feel itchy and you just wanna dig your nails into your skin, this is probably a sign that you need to work on your sleep. If you want to learn more about optimizing your sleep to heal your skin, check out this video. I hope that you're able to try out some of these tips and that they reduce your itchiness. See you next time.